Welcome to Cast of Creators. We're your hosts. I'm Nelson Thal. And I'm Casey Stewart. We've spent our careers in media and publishing, and now we're setting the stage for creative people who inspire us to share their stories. Our guest this episode is Bridget Trong. Bridget is a multimedia host, producer, and innovative content creator. Bridget is also hilarious. We talked about being a TV host, interviewing celebrities, and saying goodbye to creator burnout. Let's get into it. Welcome, Bridget. Thank you for having me, Nelson. You're welcome. It's incredible that you're here. We're so excited. We're so excited about this episode. I'm excited to be here. I've been seeing all these little clips on social media of the creators you've interviewed so far, and I feel honored to be a part of this group. Oh, thank you so much. Seriously, This is the first episode that I've done uh, with somebody that I haven't actually met in person before the episode. So I was really excited to do this one specifically because the first person that I met today. But you guys just met today, and within about... 38 seconds. <laughs> it seemed like you were oh, besties absolutely. already. I mean, we I don't want to jump to conclusions <laughs> and I don't want to scare either of you off. But yes, I have felt that energy too and I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah we're off to a good start. Every time someone walks in the door, I get so excited because, you know, I haven't seen a lot of people a lot over the last couple of years. So then yeah. like, I like scream and jump and like... <laughs> Well, it's making me feel super welcome, so thank you. This is the start that I was looking forward to. And I expect nothing less. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, so are you from Toronto? So I was actually born in Toronto General Hospital, but grew up in Mississauga. So, I mean, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And then how did you get into media and TV and influencing and... Oh, gosh. How much time do we have? Well, yeah, I'll set the start. timer. Let's start from day one. So I've known you for a long time, and I don't even really okay. know this. So yeah. Let me sit back and listen. <laughs> Take off your shoes. Kick back. Relax. Um, it Honestly, I always knew I wanted to get into broadcast. Mm. And it started when I was, um, I want to say, three or four. I know that sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. It was just before kindergarten, and I grew up as an only child to immigrant parents who first language was Cantonese, second language, um, English. My parents spoke very little English, I remember when I was a kid, and every day um, around, I don't remember what time it was, my mom would always put on Entertainment Tonight. Okay. Entertainment Tonight was like the show at home with um, Mary Hart and John Tesh and Bob Goen. I can't believe I still remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's how she picked up English over time. And so I would sit there and watch this show every night for five days a week. And I would think, I, that's cool. Like, I want to talk to people that do cool things, not really understanding the full scope of it, but I just knew that was something I was interested in. And so over time, that was always in the back of my mind, but because I grew up in quite a traditional Chinese household, my parents wanted that traditional path. So you go to school, you go to university, Mm -hmm. and you get a job with a title that people respect. Uh So the lawyer, the doctor, the accountant, whatever it is, but it's a title that people respect and that you can have financial security with. Right. Right. Um, we hear that story time and time again, and yeah. I, uh, you know, it's it's, it's definitely not a my... bad thing to wish for your kids. No, not at all. Absolutely not. And I but understood. I see you as largely an entrepreneur in many ways. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't see that at the beginning. I just knew I wanted to get into broadcast, and so went to university for communications and psychology because I thought I wanted to get into psych in some capacity. Didn't. <laughs> and then about two years into um, university at Wilfrid Laurie University, I was like, no, I got to look into this TV thing. And so that's what I did. I wrapped up my program in three years, crammed it all in. And then I took time off and just volunteered in television. And oh, so got into television. Yeah. And so vol- did I worked four jobs at the same time when I started because I knew I just had to hustle. So yeah. I went from like I was serving at the same time. I was working at Old Navy, and then I had two volunteer jobs just to ensure I was meeting people and getting my foot in the door. And then that just, like, about a year and a half into it, I got my first hosting gig at, like, 1920. Wow. Yeah, I hosted a daily talk show on Rogers Television. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, Yeah, local TV. Yeah. And then everything just kind of went from there. So started in traditional television. That's amazing to get that experience at 19 hosting. Yeah, that's a big deal. And live TV, right? You're like, oh, yeah. That's another uh, beast. Oh, a whole other beast. So it really forces you. I'm sitting here knowing I can edit anything out of this. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, it's okay, but live TV. Oh, my gosh. It's kind of scary. There's been times where I've done interviews. 
years, and I've been like, oh my god, why did they say that? Everyone heard me. I feel like a it's a like dork, and then you're like, like you yeah. have to live. With, it's live TV. It's live. Yeah. You can't take it back. You have it's to like live with it. Walking a tightrope without a net. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. Yeah, for sure. But it teaches you so much to yeah. think on your feet, right? And um, and so it just kind of grew from there. And then about seven years into my full time tenure in broadcast, I got laid off for the first time, and I was oh, like, oh man. my god, wait, no, this might be a really good sign. That I should start freelancing. Yeah. And then that's when I started sharing my story on social media. And that's how the digital component came into place. Wow. Yeah. So that's so the nutshell. Seven years at Rogers? No, or I went from like Rogers TV yeah. and then I joined CHCH. Okay. Yes, and I, I remember that. Yeah. I was, um, I actually, we like my recent show got canceled. So, but I was with them since 2009. Oh, wow. Yeah, but then I did like small gigs at like eTalk and then CBC. So I kind of just jumped around, but I was always full time at CHCH. Yeah. How Channel many interviews Zero. have you done, do you think? Oh, my gosh. Uh, like, so, like in general? Yeah, or? in general. Oh, well, I, I know what celebrity interviews I'm at around 350. Whoa. <laughs> which is, it's crazy. But over time, it does add up. And then um, overall, Oh, I don't even, I don't know. So walk me through prepping <laughs> and a celebrity interview. Oh, gosh. Okay. Nelson, where do we start? Yeah, so, <laughs> I want to so, know. Uh, yeah, I want to know. So do you have a production team? Are you doing the research yourself? Or, you know, how do you do it? So when I was doing um, The Watch List, which was my first, like, steady entertainment show on CHCH, I had a producer, which was great. So she assisted yeah. with a lot of stuff. But I'm very much of, I need to do my research because there was, actually, I have a funny story about fucking up. I can swear, Oh, right? yeah, you okay. can. Um, Lay it on. <laughs> okay, so one time, actually, I'm going, I'm skirting around, but we'll come back to that. So yeah, one time, fine. this was my first CSA, Canadian Screen Awards. Yeah. Okay. And I was like really nervous. I'm like, this is my first red carpet. There's going to be so many Canadian legends. What year? Oh, gosh. Oh, a year. I don't remember. Oh, okay. it, was, it was a year. Yeah, it was a year. It was a <laughs> It was a good year. Oh, it's good for context. Yeah, that's I know, true. Okay. That's true. It was a while ago. Okay. Pre iPhone? Mm -hmm. iPhone. Uh, I think it might have been Social yeah, media? Yeah. around the yeah. iPod days. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're throwing that's it back. For we're context. throwing it back. Yep. And um, so I was really nervous, but I, I did as much research I, as I could at the time, but not enough because oh. when Robin Thicke strolled up, oh. I started talking to him. Interview went great. And then for some reason, <laughs> At the end, I was like, so when is Elf Elf coming back? Are you guys reviving Elf? Remember <laughs> Elf? Does anyone remember Elf? Like yes. A, like a, a L F the TV show? Sure. Elf. A L F, oh, a -L -F. with the like the alien. The Muppet. Guy. Yeah, the, the Muppet alien. in the family. The alien. Lucy Elf. remember it. Yeah. Elf. It was an eighties comedy with yes. the alien. He was brown. He had a snout. Big I had, yes, yes, snout. I had snout. a stuffed okay. elf when I was a kid. Yes. Okay, I remember yeah. it. That's Elf. Snout. For some reason I thought he was the dad in Elf. So I'm like when, when we, I'm hearing that we're going to get a reboot, what's going on with that? And he's like, so kind. He's like, I don't know when it's coming back, but I sure hope it does. Oh. And so I didn't think anything of it until that night when uh. somebody from Master Control called me because he saw the footage. He's like, you know, that didn't happen, right? He's not part of that. I was like, no. Oh. So after that, I was he's very so nice to play oh it God. that way. It was so sweet. Yeah, but that's he, very sweet. I got lucky. But after yes. that, I was like, I'm taking the reins in. Producing and doing the research for the interviews. But maybe you were thinking of Robin Thicke. Alan Thicke? Yeah, his dad. His Sorry, dad Alan was Thicke. on a show. Sorry, Alan oh, Thicke. Alan I apologize. Thicke. Alan oh, Thicke oh, was wow. a dad on a different show. On a different show. Yeah, on Growing Pain. Yeah. Yes, now I'm screwing it all up. It was Alan okay. Thicke. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and then so after that, I was like, I got to take on these interviews. I, I got to do my research. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very, <laughs> my process is very much Funny. creeping. I've yeah. mastered the art of it's called research. <laughs> Social I'm media. I'm also really creeper. good at research. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, give me the name of anyone, I'll yeah. find everything about them. You are what good school at that. they went to. I yeah. was like, no problem. Be right back. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You revel in somebody asking. Yeah, you to I'm like, too. I can get that. It's a skill set. Yeah, it it's really a total is. Skill it is a skill. skill. But when Sleuthing. you have <laughs> But when you have four... In fact, I have a degree in it. <laughs> <laughs> I could always make a living doing that. <laughs> She's framed it right over here. Um, but when you have four to six minutes with the talent, that's all you get in a junket, right? Mm. You got to move Well, quick. that's the thing. Like, this is, you know, longer than four to six minutes, obviously. <laughs> so it reduces the need for such intensive prep. Totally, But if yeah. you've got four to six minutes and you're live, you better know how you're going to fill that four to six minutes. Exactly. And you better fill it with good 
stuff because they're coming on for six minutes and they want gold out of that six minutes for that you know, the celebrity yeah. Yeah. The segment. Totally. So. And you know, being in a junket arena, there's like a million reporters in that junket. Right. So you're bound to have questions overlap. So you don't want to keep asking them the same questions that they've been answering for two right. hours. So to get really nitty gritty or fun, because that's what you want to have yeah. during these things, yes. you do the research. And so social media has always been my anchor about watching old interviews and then obviously learning about the project itself. Mm-hmm. Or like following their tweets and be like, I saw you had chicken parmesan yesterday. How was that? I've been meaning to go there. <laughs> you would lead with that. You would definitely know. lead an like, interview with that. Did you get leftovers? Do you have any? No, like, I don't know. Have you ever You'd asked? Be a heck of a producer. Yeah. <laughs> Casey, you're It's all fine. about meals. I you to- look at Casey's. <laughs> I used to work in TV too. I got let go for my entertainment company job but you know that also was a big opportunity for me oh yeah. you know it shifted things i was gonna ask you like is there ever anything like speaking of fun questions that you ask people like is there ever do you have like a go-to like a fallback question if like something gets awkward or like something that you would you know mm-hmm. always always or something that always like makes people smile like you know when you're interviewing someone it's like if they're smiling during the interview then you know you're doing a good job yeah. like we're looking for those questions <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have any tips <laughs> oh you mean like remember when no, pierce you- morgan had a cnn show and in oh, every yeah. interview his his go-to question was how many times have you been properly in love oh, oh. <laughs> yes That's like something like that yeah do you have okay. like do you have like a like a classic bridge question or anything i don't but now i or wish i did back. yeah i, I, I don't did. have one either My i feel like i should always, get one like when i did the research kind of based on old interviews they done yeah. was gauge what their personality or vibe was like yeah, and then yeah. kind of go off on that but I, that's just like i should do yeah, that like you should do that we should all do we that. should all do yeah. that one of the things mm-hmm. that i i saw is like um I don't know, something I learned in the pandemic watching, I don't know, things on internet is like, instead of meeting, when you meet someone like, oh, what do you do? Like, I absolutely hate when people ask me that. It's like, what's making you smile these days? Or like, what have you done in the last 24 hours that made you smile? Oh, I love and that. I feel like that is a lot. It's a better icebreaker if you're meeting someone. Cause like, if for me, I'm like a multi hyphenate, they call it a woman who does many things, wears many hats. And it's like, you know, I feel like, What's something that made you smile in the last 24 hours? Um, that's I would- personal. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's answer. personal. You got another question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I well, know. 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but like, I feel like asking that versus like, oh, so what do you do? When someone asked me that, I was like, I love sitting. Mm. How much do you hate that question? I hate it when people are like, what do what you do? do? I was like, Google me. <laughs> Yeah, like what do you do? Know, I don't know. I went for a run today. Yeah, I, I did too. Okay, like, yeah. cross off my next question. <laughs> that Nelson's is, uh, like, okay. Good thing we don't prep a lot. All for my this. questions have been crossed off. <laughs> I'm so sorry to ruin this for you. Uh, oh, no, we're no done. No, just <laughs> Thanks for coming. We don't prep a lot for this because they think it's better to be just free form and, you know, 100%. Well, if, if you aren't constricted by any time. Yes. Uh, limitations yeah like for sure it eases the um the pressure on yeah the prep <laughs> it definitely eases the prep At the, yeah it definitely eases the um the prep so, what? did you two meet on the circuit <laughs> you we, I we interviewed did. you. Yes. I interviewed you at wow. Next Media. Yes, wow. yeah, a long time ago. Um, it was ages ago. Um, well, don't I mean, ask me the year, Nelson. I'm don't not ask I, me I the mean, year. it was. Uh, <laughs> I'll take I might can tell one. you what I was wearing. I'm cross that one off too. <laughs> I can tell you what I was wearing, but I can't tell you when it was. Um, pre-pandemic, mm. I was wearing a rented dress from Fitzroy. I had a low cut. It was black and white, flowers on it. Um, you asked me what I did. <laughs> 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 did I ask you what you did? I don't remember that. No, but you, you had a pixie cut. You had a yes. beautiful pixie cut. Ah. I did. It was ba- it was in the short hair era. Mm. It was. Yeah. Like, but I remember distinctly <laughs> that we had met a couple of times, and I was like, "You're really fun. I like it. We should hang out. Can we like actually hang out?" <laughs> And we didn't actually hang out mm-hmm. until what two years ago? Maybe? Yeah, it was right before the pandemic. Yeah. We actually went to Fitzroy. <laughs> that's exactly what well, happened. That's a fun. That's a fun outing to Fitzroy. We went yeah. to watch an award show, and it was actually quite funny because you watched the show there. We watched an award show mm-hmm. there. The Oscars. Oh, fun. The Oscars. Yeah. Well, we took some really pictures. Smart that, that's smart that they did that. <laughs> Brilliant. Right? Yeah, totally I like that idea. In line. We went there. We took some pictures. They had a good laugh, and they were like, "You want to get out of here?" 
She was like, yeah. I was like, want to go to my house, smoke a joint, have a dance party? <laughs> <laughs> And then that's exactly what we did. Exactly we were like, what we did. We put on, like, took off all our, you know, uh, unnecessary dressy accessories, just put on some, like, old school hip hop, and we're like, for the yeah. record, we we had a great time at the yeah, event. Yeah, it was great really time. fun. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that it wasn't fun, but, like, you- after a while, watching an award show with, like, a group, we're like, okay, like, Maybe, maybe we oh, should yeah. yeah. Look, it wasn't as spicy as the last Oscars. <laughs> ex- that was exactly our That would have kept you there. In. Yeah, that would have. Yeah. yeah. They looked around. They said, oh, well, you know, Casey and Bridget <laughs> disappeared into the clothing rack about 30 <laughs> minutes ago. Was he there? Were you there? No. <laughs> I have been to Fitzroy, though. With yeah. My, with Talia. Yeah, yeah. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, fun. that's like it's fun I sent you um, Nelson's Instagram, and I was like, "You might recognize Sam from knowing Talia," and you were like, "Oh yeah, I do." You know what's funny? I've never met Talia in person before, which is wild. Now that oh. I think of it, I it just dawned on me. I haven't met her in person, but I feel like I've known her for a while. <laughs> <laughs> she that's has the effect. social age. Wow. But well, that's the story she told me about you. She was <laughs> oh, like, oh. she was like, <laughs> say I. I would have never guessed that you had never met her in person. I think I but, asked her uh, what she did. That's probably mm. the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do again? She would add a good reply to that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I bet. Yeah, she's a witty one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's um, quite entertaining answering that question. Yeah. <laughs> no, we got to meet up soon. Yeah. That'd be wonderful. You can yeah. meet Ariel. I know. Oh, my gosh. Or, what if What if Ariel came to you one day, Nelson? Mm-hmm. Let's just say <laughs> 13, 13, 14, because that's the TikTok age. Okay. She's like, Daddy, I want to be a social media star. Oh. What would your response be to that? Oh, my response would be, if you're passionate about that, go for it. That sounds great. Come on into the podcast um, studio. We'll yeah. shoot some content. <laughs> yeah. Gold grandma that would, case. That would be, um, I think with all those things, you know, I'm working really hard to expose her to all sorts of stuff that she can master so she has the confidence to, you know, go into anything. And I can trust her judgment in what into what you know in what anything she goes into so i think it's a large part of it's about exposure Mm -hmm. and about um uh being confident to give her responsibility early i think that's really important that's a great idea yeah look at that ultimate support Yeah. yeah yeah but it's been uh amazing and she would be a phenomenal uh influencer or tiktok star or whatever she wants to go into I mean, look at who's going to be ra- – well, who is currently raising her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be a natural she transition. She has, like, will have the most style. She'll have the best audio visual around in any <laughs> kid in preschool. <laughs> she could, she's gorgeous. She could already be, you know, a Gerber baby. I <laughs> know. <laughs> we need to get her a calendar stat. Yeah. People still use those, Or an right? agent. Or, or an, an agent. agent. Yeah, that's probably more lucrative. to make her a calendar. <laughs> make a calendar with her. Yeah, yeah every so month. Fun. You have so many pictures. You could do an Aria uh, first year of her life for Christmas. Calendar. calendar totally oh gosh that's a great idea yeah that our is buds at ups will print it no yeah. <laughs> we, expect, we expect one in the mail now yeah. oh i love that okay uh she definitely has enough pictures of her yeah <laughs> i don't think i have more pictures of anybody else at this point oh wow. she's a model baby yeah. yeah well speaking of like creator creator life what do your parents think of what you do now they don't mm-hmm. get it <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Do your parents understand it? Uh, mm, not so much, but they're happy for me. They know I internet. If my mom hasn't heard me from a little while, she checks my Twitter. <laughs> they know I internet. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a, it's a verb. I don't that ask them for money. With. I'm like self sufficient. I think that's, that's the key. what they're like. Yeah, they're happy. Yeah. You know, what's at a good level of like not understanding when they don't ask questions. So, yes. Yeah. So I'm okay with the fact that they still don't understand. I remember when um, I was the VIP host at Cine- Cineplex Theaters. Yes, I remember that too. And I, and I remember telling them when I got the job and my mom, like question after question, but of the same question was, so like every time you work, you have to sh- show up to the theater and talk to people. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like I'm going to be shooting content with their team and they're going to show it in theaters before the movie starts. So it's a pre-show. So you have to be there and present to people. No, 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 mom. I'm going <laughs> to, you're like, like on, I'm the gonna be on the screen. It's going to be pre-recorded. It's going to show up on social as well. Um, but I'm hosting it. So you're <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yes. Did they up. go to the movies and watch you? Eventually, yes. Yeah. Eventually, she's so like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you be there? No, I'm kidding. She didn't ask that again. But yeah, it, it's still hard. <laughs> and then the social media aspect when it comes to paid partnerships. I think for an older generation, generations who weren't born to the digital age, have a hard time understanding what that actually means. Because if you really think about it, it's a it's wild weird. concept. It's weird. It, it's because traditionally... It's big time celebrities being endorsed for a skill set that they have right. in athletics or, I don't know, arts, whatever it is. But this is a, a game that a lot of people still don't know about. Yeah. Okay. I remember this one time. <laughs> I remember this one time that uh, we worked together on something for Nintendo and Best Buy and... Uh, in the process, we got a couple games, we got a Nintendo, and then we also got paid. And explaining that to my parents and my sister, and they're like, so they just send you the stuff? I'm like, yeah, I just got this whole box of things. And explaining that, oh, and we get paid. And I was like, you have the best job ever. Yeah. You know? It's, it, no, it really is a privilege. It's, yeah. It, that partnership was so fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> we made, like, we an Instagram reels. reel, and we, like, both played games together. It was really fun. It was fun. But, like, traditionally, that's not what people grew up no. knowing right so i still believe like it's such a privilege to be able to do what oh, we do totally. it's super fun but yeah i never dreamed of doing no because you don't know about it i no, you're I mean, in it before without the network without a deal with a major network yeah it's you not could like never you could do broadcast. that broadcast you know same no. with the music business i mean it's not like you could ever be famous in the music business if you didn't have a label and a deal and uh you know somebody pressing your your albums and distributing your albums so yeah Nike wasn't sending you anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, Nintendo wasn't sending yeah. you anything. Anyone, even Nike, they weren't sending yeah, they weren't anything. Sending anything yeah. Well, one of the things I think about, um, like, even creating that content that we did together, which is one of, one of many content partnerships we've had over the years, not together, but you know, with different brands, is people don't necessarily realize how challenging it is to actually create the content, especially when it's like fuck it's due we got it we were supposed to do that we were supposed to meet last week oh, yeah. and we just got to send it in tomorrow okay are we gonna do this are we gonna do this okay and then we're like fuck texting each other okay send me your picture send me your like it, it actually creating the content and like you have to be in the right frame of mind you have to like get your outfits and sometimes you have to send things for approval and doesn't get approved and then you got to reshoot yeah it's it's actually creator life is very stressful yeah. It's amazing how quickly it tiptoes into work. <laughs> Seriously. No, it's true. And we know. We've seen the documentaries. We've, yeah. We've read the research. Like, yeah. the, like, the correlation between social media and mental health levels are real. Yeah. yeah. And they're real for a reason. And many of them. Many reasons. Yeah. But, yeah, the pressure can be a lot. Yeah, it can be exhausting. And, like, I mean, for a while, even during, like, pandemic times, it's like, I just didn't have it in me to post a lot sometimes because I was like, I just need to take a break. I'm feeling yeah. too stressed about it, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I was tiptoeing around posts for those two years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, it's completely natural. I, I came across this um, creator who talked about um, how he doesn't believe in creator burnout. He's like, that's bullshit. That's a bullshit excuse. Um, people use that excuse when they're not creating anything that they like. I disagree with that. I, oh, I, I disagree too. Yeah. I think that burnout especially if you're not careful about like what it is that you need whether it's spacing out partnerships content whatever it is if it if you're doing too much too soon or whatever it is and it doesn't work for you it could really kill you yeah yeah absolutely yeah. especially if you um like if you don't have it another job or you creating right. content is your main source of income i found i was a like a full-time creator for a bunch of years and i found that that to me was what kind of turned me off and saying I need to make a shift in my life where being Casey Stewart on the internet yeah. is not my full-time thing because it took the joy out of it it's like you can talk to artists that it's like you know you you make art but as soon as you start adding like the price and the selling of the art that it becomes more of a business that sometimes that can take the joy out of it and that's kind right. of how that's kind of how it was for me I felt like when I was like I need to make sure I can pay my half of the mortgage, so I'm going to take this brand partnership when I don't necessarily love the thing as much as mm -hmm. I really do. And I find that, to me, was where I was like, this ain't me. I can't do that anymore. But I applaud you for that because a lot of people will still <laughs> stay in it for a lot of perks. Yeah, yeah or like the free come. stuff and things. I mean, we've all seen creators that are like, buddy, yeah. you 
must have got paid for that or you really needed the money because what is this <laughs> every picture you're like I was like sounding really excited. I'm like, you can't love everything that much. And nothing makes you that excited. You like everything, yeah. I, like, I oh, want to really? be that person. I want to love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Samsung watch strap, but <laughs> you know, like, yeah. or like a cup holder. You're like, well, this is the best cup holder in the whole world. If you love cups, this is a cup holder. I will say, though, cups do come in many different sizes now, so it's hard to find the right cup holders. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, but you know what I mean. We've all seen it. And, I mean, sometimes that's what you got to do. But, I mean, I knew that I needed to make a shift, and here we are. Yeah. No, and I think that's a good warning to, like, aspiring influencers or creators, if yeah. you will, out there, is that what's great about the social media era is that – or era – is that – Anyone can play. Anyone yeah. can play ball. And yeah. there's no, like, gateway to entry. Like, you just go in and do your thing, and you build an audience, and hopefully that picks up traction. Cool. But you have to be careful, because over time, you could find yourself, like you said, in those positions where you say yes to things you don't feel comfortable with. Yeah. And then for me, um, I got, I wasn't in the best headspace at the end of last year, because I was yeah. so overwhelmed with the partnerships, um, not because I didn't enjoy them, but because with the revisions and the edits, I felt like I was losing my voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I understand it's, you're working with corporations, it's marketing, it's branding. You got to stay true to what they want as well. But over time for creators who are so close to their work, that can feel really stifling. Of course. Oh, Especially yeah. if you book a couple of those gigs in, in a row. Yeah. Then yeah, before yeah, you yeah. know, it's like two months later, you're like, who am I? <laughs> no, Emma. but that happens. Was like that if Zoolander, you, yes, yeah, 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 in the puddle. Who am I? Yeah. Mm. yeah, but like you, you. It's really, I think, important <laughs> as a creator. You gotta like if someone wants to work with you and they like you and your style of content and the things that you do. You gotta push back because like my f Instagram feed is all like really bright colors and things, different things. So if someone comes to me with an idea and I was like. That's not going to work for me. Or I can do it like this. Mm -hmm. Here's are the three ways I could do something like this. But if it doesn't fit my style or my voice, I, I just can't do it. And like, it's important. Yeah, you gotta. You know, you have your style, and I, you know, I love you and your posts. But I feel like you do a pretty good job of, you know, of doing that to yeah. like be your own self that comes through because that's what people like and they follow you. If you're just regurgitating marketing copy from something, you're just a walking billboard, and they might as well just do like a paid ad. You know, a hundred percent. And it's yeah. not fun. I agree. No, it's not fun. No. no, you're better off pushing back, losing the job, yep. but continuing to push back. Yep. And if you yourself and your authentic self is what people want to see, then that will be the wind at your back that gets you to the brands that, you know, can yeah, help. Yeah, the that. right brands will, will come 100%. to you, I think. You and know? I found myself in positions where I pushed back so many times that there was no budge. And the worst part was the contract was already signed. Uh, right. So I had to go ahead and still just bite my tongue yeah. on certain aspects. And that never felt good. And you, once you find yourself in those positions, you don't want to go back. And you it takes don't. the joy out of it because you're yeah. like, oh, I've got to post this. And then you DM right. your friends. Can you please leave a comment on this sponsored post? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> because you're like, guys, I really need your help on this post. Yeah. <laughs> it happens all the time. Not, no, this is not why you should be creating at all. Because <laughs> then you're like, shit, this post is getting zero engagement because it doesn't sound like me at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have to like, because the client... <sighs> Pushed you into a corner to say what they want, not saying how you want to say it. And then your engagement drops because people are like, oh, they're, 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 they're a billboard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah like, there's Casey with Did her. Did you read ad. that from a script yeah, there, bro? Yeah. <laughs> people like, can see and smell the bullshit from a mile oh, away yeah. these days yeah. when they're bombarded with ads. Like, you don't want to give them more. And it's not going to help the brand at all. No, it in makes marketing the brand their product. look worse. No, it makes, makes them, them look, look worse. worse. Nobody wins in that situation. I have heard from agency insiders <laughs> 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 that TikTok obviously yeah. is now a huge market yeah. uh, for paid ads um, that TikTok is a completely different ball game because it's so encouraged on that platform to be yourself right like completely right. raw that creators on there will not fuck around with anything like you meddling with their brand like they or voice they that. won't do any of it at all like so they'll literally say to you no yeah absolutely not and they'll walk away from it and that's I love good. that that's that i think will teach a lot of people yeah. in that industry a lot of lessons about it 
that gives me hope for the influencers and creators of the future. Me too. Yeah, as a sure. as a OG, you of the are internet, an OG. I want that for the yeah. you know, <laughs> the people and you. You're gonna keep yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> I'm just not reading your scripts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> throw it away <laughs> well you know it goes like with with some of the greatest movies the casting director and just picking the right actor and mm-hmm. you don't have to you know you pick the right actor you don't have to tell them a lot you just give you know you, you get them in the movie you give them the script it's like you're hiring that person they come in they do their thing and you can you know give them a ton of leash and you know you, you've got the right person for the job so you'll get the right result and I think that if I was, you know, if you're a brand and you're looking at the influencer game the same way, you you basically have to pick your, your person um, mm-hmm. and accept them for who they are and yeah. let them be excited about the, the entire experience. Exactly. And if you're not, you're just, you know, doing yourself a disservice because you're going to get an inauthentic piece of content. And who who wants that? No one responds to that. Like I know that you go home and scarf up those uh, spicy ketchup chips. Oh, <laughs> like, I know that you I had fucking love right. those. Yeah. Have you tried them? No, and, and, you look for I, them to get them for, for you. Today. Today. But I, I know that it's you know you don't actually behind the scenes hate them. No, yeah, I you actually love, love them. I'm salivating just thinking about it. No, because mm-hmm. when I first started out, I was like, I'm get. Brands want to pay me to take a photo with these Fuck chips yeah. I love. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But then over time, when you're not careful about what you're actually taking on, you literally feel like you're living a lie. And I'm like, I can't yeah, do that. No. So it was very much like you. You get to the point where you're like, no, I, I have to be smart about this. Yeah. I, I only want to promote things that I use and like. It, <laughs> duh. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's really important for any creator who's coming up in the game or, or starting out in that influencer paid marketing space. Yes. Like, Do you have a big family? No, I'm an only child. <laughs> no, I mean cousins. Yeah, parents. a few in mm. Toronto. Yeah. Oh, very mm. nice. Why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're for a loop there. I'm like, Do you, did it? they tell you something? Like, yeah, I was no. like, is no this one told about? Me. Oh, okay. No. All right. yep. You're like doing your deep dive on her before this, and you're like, no, 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 ancestry.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you want to know if they like big chips family? as well? You don't know. No, no, it's just I love it. Yeah. We love it. Well, Bridge, <laughs> I'm so glad that you could join us today. Thank you for having me. I've had a blast. It's been so fun having you here, have our studios laughing with us, having good conversation, talking about creator life, influencer things. That riveting conversation about your family. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that stays in. Oh, it'll no, stay in. That's not getting cut. <laughs> that's not getting like, cut. Can we like shimmy it around? Can we lead with it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today on the podcast, we talk to Bridget, and there's a moment where we talk, get real deep about her family. <laughs> do you want to ask Look, me what I do? And we can throw that in yeah. <laughs> Look, some big family stories get rather complicated and interesting. <laughs> That's going to be the episode title. Yeah. Generational trauma yeah. and ketchup chip. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Awesome. Bridget, great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you for being here. It's been a blast. We love you. Love you. Thanks for tuning in to this episode with Bridget. Follow her adventures on Instagram or TikTok at Bridget Trong. And you can check out more episodes of Cast of Creators on YouTube, your favorite podcast platform, or castofcreators.com.